This week we are discussing the next four chapters of I Was Told There'd Be Cake by Sloane Crosley from The Good People of This Dimension to Fuck You Columbus. That is so satisfying to say. I always appreciate authors who can really hone in on one small subject or situation and expand it out into a well-thought essay or into a well-thought anything. <laughs> Obviously, I struggle with that. And I think that Sloane Crosley does that really well in this book. Even reading about her getting locked out of her apartment twice I thought was entertaining because I think that we can all sort of see ourselves in the dialogue or in the awkward conversation and there's a lot to be read in there in between the lines. However, while I appreciated these slice of life stories, I can't say that I really understood the chapter titled the good people of this dimension. I kind of felt like Sloane Crosley was trying to work in a message about humanity or about neighbors in that chapter, but I, I think I'm gonna miss something because it never really felt like that chapter had an ending to me, and so I may just have misread something completely. And I actually thought that the chapter, The Beauty of Strangers, did a better job sort of having a message about humanity than that one did. My favorite chapter was probably Bastard out of Winchester um, because I think it kind of, it also gave some of that explaining, that background information that I wanted and talked about in last week's video. In that chapter, Sloan Crosley talked about the mutedness of growing up in the suburbs and one of my favorite lines was on page 73. Suburbia is too close to the country to have anything real to do and too close to the city to admit you have nothing real to do. Its purpose is to make it so you can identify with everything. We obviously grew up identifying with nothing. And the part that followed that, I thought it was a really great introspective and a really great retrospective analysis of how a lot of us feel probably when we're growing up. Hopefully other people have felt that way as well. I also appreciated how she discussed finding an identity, finding her identity, and having an unusual name. I can't count the amount of times people have asked me if my last name Birdsong is a Native American name when it is German. And uh, there is also a show or a book or maybe both named Birdsong, and I am still getting tweets about it. I made a note that there were a couple times in the book where I thought that the diction could be toned down a bit because occasionally it makes it seem a little bit uptight and not sort of down to earth. And I know that Sloane Crosley is a writer, so she's probably used to using bigger words instead of speaking and writing more on a pedestrian level. But I noted she used the word malodorous when I think stinky would have worked fine and it probably would have made it seem more on an everyday person's level. But I am impressed with the diction. It definitely makes the essay sound more thought out. So that's just a personal opinion. But so far I'm really enjoying this book and next week we will be discussing the next four chapters from one Night Bounce to The Height of Luxury. This week I would like to know your thoughts on the book now that we are about halfway done with it. Also, I would like to know what you think of all of the slice of life stories compared to maybe how a memoir is written and if you are finding the meaning that it seems like Sloane Crosley is meaning to put into them, if that makes any sense. So read up and I will see you guys next day.